get your wine, get your liquor, or get your kombucha, whatever the, the tea, whatever it is. But get ready for a great episode. Mad Gains. When Mad Gains goes live, that signals to you it is Friday. It is time to stop working. We're done. We're just done. Just don't tell your boss. But that's what it should signal to you. We have a great episode for you today. I have found you an industry gem. You may know him. If you don't, you're in for a treat. I'm so excited to introduce him to you. And then I have something to tell you that's sad for some of you. If you didn't go to F3, that is sad. And I'm sorry. I told you guys that you would get FOMO. You probably saw it all over LinkedIn, all over Instagram, and you heard your friends talk about it. Great ways puts on the best conferences. The Boiler Room Boys were there. Our production team, they were working hard. Craig was there. Everybody was there. It was an amazing event. Great networking. Y'all missed out, but don't miss out again. Go to Freightways website to look at future events and get involved because they put on great events. It's great networking. Come on now. Great content. All right. Let's get the show started. You guys are about to meet George Yates. He is what I call the industry gem. I found him. He's mine. He belongs to me. Hi, George. I'm excited to have you with us. Oh, and there he is. What is that you're wearing, George? Uh, it would be the number one football team in the country's shirt. Uh, all right, here we go. You have to check out my shirt. I wore it today just for you. It says wild as a mink, people. And if you zoom in, you can't zoom in because the Boiler Boys are eating Wendy's right now, but you can see a mink yelling. I love this shirt because I saw it in Tennessee, and I was like, I'm wild as a mink. I like it. And then my friend told me that it represents Tennessee, the football team, um, mm -hmm. whom I love now, George. Like, I love them. <laughs> I'm officially well, there's, Tennessee There's a lot fan. of people that do. I, they're a good, they're a good <sighs> football team. Um, they're not the best football team. George, did you think – you were gonna. They were gonna. Did you think Georgia was gonna lose going in? Tell us the truth. I didn't think we were gonna lose. Uh, I I knew it would be a good game. Um, elite offense, amazing play calling. Um, I, I would be lying if I said I wasn't nervous, but uh, it was a good game. I I disagree. Well, is that a Georgia hat behind you? Wait, helmet. I'm not a football fan. All of these, you know. I went to a Tennessee game, and look at that. Look, there's a hat. A helmet. There is a uh, wow. Georgia Bulldogs football helmet signed by Kirby Smart. So, okay, so it wasn't signed by your yeah. mom. It was signed by somebody real. No, <laughs> I'd let my mom sign it probably. She's up there on the list, but you uh, would? No, it's yeah, for sure. Damn, you love your mama. <laughs> I wouldn't let anybody uh, sign anything that sports person signed. <laughs> All right, I didn't mean to pick yeah. on you. Yes, I did. That was the whole reason I brought you in. I was actually hoping by the time you got here, Tennessee would have won and I could have given you a bunch of crap because they're my new favorite team, but that went sideways for me. Um, okay, so to those of you just joining us, this is the famous George Yates. He doesn't like it when I call him famous. He doesn't like it when I make a big deal out of him. But George, I think you are an industry gem. I think you're a diamond in the rough. Um, and I want the world to know it as well, at least our industry. Um, could you tell us what were you doing before freight? I was in college, um, went to a, a small school in North Georgia, and I was uh, in the Army for seven years as well. Very nice. So Do you think that I was being trying, IRB trying, trying to find my way? Yeah. Do you think being in the Army has helped you and your success that you've had today? Or are you like, I hated those years. I want to forget them forever. No, I definitely don't hate it. Don't regret it. Um, I do think it, it it taught me a lot about work ethic and, you know, working with a team and discipline. Um, it was hard. It was challenging, but it was rewarding at the same time. And, you know, the brotherhood that was formed during those seven years uh, still exists today. And I stay in contact with a lot of my friends and um, wouldn't change it for the world. But, yeah, it was challenging trying to balance that with school and, building a career at the same time. And, um, yeah, I mean, I, I appreciate the time that I was in. Yeah, I bet you do. I mean, I appreciate who you are today. So I bet that became part of who you are. Um, so, so, all right. So wait, but where was your first freight job? And you know, how this I started my career. You just say what it is if you don't, if you want to. 
No, I don't mind at all. So I started my career at uh, U.S. Express, and, um, you know, I'm thankful that they took a chance on me earlier in my career. And um, still have a lot of the relationships uh, from when I started there. Um, you know, I was the, – the plan was originally to go to law school and um, got into law school in about two weeks before I was supposed to start. Um, got cold feet and uh, just started applying for jobs, decided not to go, and – um, the only companies that would call me back was transportation and logistics companies, and uh, I'm thankful that they did. Um, had no idea um, about you know freight brokerage or transportation, warehousing, anything about that stuff at all. And um, started my career in, in driver recruiting, which is honestly the most challenging job I've ever had. Um, but learned a lot from it and uh, got some exposure from some individuals um, at US and um, was offered a role in their, in their freight brokerage when it was up and coming and uh, took a leap of faith and it, it worked out. It was a little synergistic to go from driver recruiting into freight brokerage yeah. where you're again, recruiting, but this time carriers <laughs> and, yeah, so, have, and you're like, actually I can slide right into this. Well, I mean, it, it, it teaches you a lot about negotiation and building relationships and trust and, uh, you know, that translated to my to my role in carrier sales where I started my career. And, um, you know, if, if, if people only outside of this industry knew um, how hard those drivers work on a daily basis and the things that they go through and being on the road away from their families, um, I think they would appreciate them a lot more, especially when it comes to the holidays and during the pandemic and how, um, how much visibility the supply chain actually, you know, got from that so um learned a lot from it really really challenging but i did learn a lot how um how hard for those people who have never been in a carrier sales position how hard is that position um <laughs> in terms of a, a freight brokerage role um probably probably the hardest position out there especially over the last like two and a half years um you know it's you know, as tight as capacity got, um, as much demand as there was, you know, it, it really, it really, uh, brought out the grit and tenacity in a lot of people. And, um, you yeah. know, it's, it's challenging, but it's rewarding. And those relationships you carry with you throughout your career. Um, you know, candidly, I still have a relationship with one of the first carriers I ever booked out of Chicago that I've worked with 10 years ago, it still runs freight for us today. And even though I'm in a different organization, it's, it's crazy how long lasting those uh, relationships can be and, and the trust that you build and um, just how you get to know those individuals on a personal level about their families, what their interests are. Um, and that, that translates into success for the organization you work for as well as their companies and seeing them grow and flourish as well. Yeah, I hope people are, you know, especially those who are in carrier sales or in leadership, I hope they hear what George is saying. He has been around for a long time. and taking the time to build those relationships with your carriers and creating a core carrier group. I've heard over and over again, pay off year after year after year, no matter what cycle we're in within the industry. Um, I think that sometimes it's forgotten when we get into a uh, different type of market and people are just in a hurry and they're like, all right, whatever carrier is going to run this load, just freaking whoever picks up, go like, and it's it's tough to slow down and build those relationships. So, what where did you go after U.S. Express, or did you move about through a U.S. Express? What does your career look like there? Yeah, so I had a, a short stint um, at FEC Railway, so relocated to Jacksonville, Florida. Um, you know, helped manage their drage and owner operators and, and their carrier outsourcing for the railroad. And then uh, Craig Fuller recruited me back to Chattanooga. So. Um, this is before Freight Waves was, you know, officially Freight Waves, but small startup trying to figure out who we were going to be in the world. Um, you know, Vincent and uh, David Bradford and, and Craig and I were in a room on a daily basis just trying to grow a company. And, um, you know, thankful that he helped my family get back to Chattanooga and learned a lot. And um, after Freight Waves, I uh, ended up at Covenant. That's where I am today. Nice. And, uh, oh, um, just so you know, I call him Daddy Bradford. He doesn't like that name at all. But that's because Daddy every Bradford. time I say something I'll, I'll wrong like on this show, <laughs> <laughs> you have to call him that just to get him all mad because every time something goes yeah. wrong on this show, 
um, people call him to complain um, when it comes to me. Like, I think one time I posted something about a carrier who had a performance problem on carrier, sure. And the carrier called Daddy Bradford and complained. And Bradford's like, why am I getting these phone calls? What is Cassandra doing? And then it just made me laugh. I love he, that. He's the problem. Yeah, he's he's the problem solver. One of the most genuine human beings out there. Um, very very patient. Um, he's he's a, he's a good man. He is a good man. Um, okay, so Tennessee. Now you're a Georgia fan. I'm confused, but I hear you saying you like Tennessee. You're back to Tennessee. Tell me the tell me the relationship <laughs> there. Is it just because you went to college uh, in Georgia? Well, is that it? No, I've I've lived in North Georgia the majority of my life. Um, you know, my, my, my entire family's in Georgia, I just kind of grew up with it. And, uh, it, it, it was lonely growing up in, um, or going to school in Chattanooga as a kid when Peyton Manning was, um, uh, you know, flourishing and T Martin won the national title. I, I was an outcast, uh, among a bunch of volunteers, but, you know, I stuck to it. And, uh, you know, I still live in North Georgia today, but I commute to, uh, Chattanooga for work. Have you been to a Tennessee game? Did you go and see Peyton Manning? Maybe it would change no, uh, the team. I haven't, I haven't been to Knoxville in a while. Um, you know, I remember how intense it was. I remember it being extremely loud. Um, but the last game I went to, Pig Howard fumbled it out of the end zone, and Georgia ended up winning it. So it was, it was a good game to go to I in Knoxville. Painful. God, look at you <laughs> it was a good game, though. <laughs> so, so my very first football game ever, and I told the Boiler Room boys this, but they didn't care. They didn't even ask me how it went. They are just not my friends anymore, apparently, except for Izzy. I have to be nice to him today. Oh, you did ask? No, you didn't ask. You asked afterwards. Sorry, you guys can't hear him. But I can in my ear, in my head. So um, I went with my friend Hannah. Anna Richards is an amazing person. She's in this industry. If you don't know her, go on LinkedIn and connect with her. But she was born and raised in Knoxville, and she wanted to bring me to a Tennessee game. So I went, and I'd never been to a football game before because I grew up in New York. We watched baseball and bums on the streets and watch out for our wallets. We don't watch football. So I went to this <laughs> game, and George, I like, it, like, it just blew my mind. It was definitely loud, which I'm cool with. They had freaking jet planes flying over the top of the stadium. They had like a 300 person band. It was amazing. And they played against Kentucky and poor Kentucky. They just got their asses kicked and it was so fun. And they did fireworks and singing. It was amazing. I was like this, I've been missing out on this my whole life. My dad took me to Yankee games, which I thought Yankee games were cool, but they're like, it's like boring compared to this. My God. Yeah. It was so fun. So nobody does nobody does football like the the SEC does, and um, you know the, the hype is real. Tennessee's a good football team. I'm I'm ashamed that you're a Tennessee fan and not a Georgia fan, but you know I'm a, yeah. I'll accept you for it. <laughs> so let's get back to your journey. So you're at Covenant. How long have you been at Covenant for? I've been at Covenant for around five and a half years. Oh boy! So where did you start in logistics? Yeah, so uh, I took a, a director of sales and operations role in our, our freight brokerage. Um, we were around fifty million in terms of a run rate at the time, and um, you know we, we we've been fortunate. We've uh, we've added some really good talent. We're, we're investing in the technology and uh, aligning ourselves with you know strategic partners that are going to help us continue to build you know the foundation of our business. And you know it's it's been extremely interesting that how Covenant has transformed in the last five and a half years since I've been here. And, um, you know, we really work with a good team and uh, we're excited about the future. So your team loves you. I've met a lot of them. They, they absolutely love you. And I guess why I called you the gem of the industry because everybody that meets you just loves you, myself included. And, and I want to know, I want to dig into some of the leadership principles that you followed, or maybe it's just rules of thumb or whatever, but let's start at the beginning. So like yeah. when you're hiring someone, how are you able to determine whether somebody would be a good fit in your team? Uh, I, I look for, you know, attributes. Um, you know, I'm not trying to use like buzzwords or, you know, be cliche, but, um, you know, I, I look for integrity. Uh, I look for, 
uh, people that I think are going to have grit and, and tenacity that, you know, that we can trust and work in the trenches together and grow, um, you know, eagerness to learn, curiosity goes along the way, um, mm-hmm. you know, willing, willing to jump in and take risks, um, you know, that, that goes a long way for me too, but, um, you know, I'm the type of person I'll give anybody a shot as, as long as they, they truly want it. And, um, you know, I, you know, I, I was a, I was a rough, uh, I was a rough rock back in the day. And, um, you know, I was surrounded by people that poured into me that were patient with me, um, even when I didn't deserve it. And, uh, you know, I tried to give back in, in that regards. Um, but, you know, I, uh, not everybody's going to choose logistics as a lifelong career. Right. Um, yeah. but when I'm, when I'm interviewing people or talking to them, building a relationship, the skills that you can learn in this industry can translate into to different areas of their life and their careers that, that can help them grow in whatever Avenue they choose. Um, so, you know, I'm fortunate to be in a position to, to lead the people that are on my team and, um, you know, I, I can tell you I love them way more than they love me. And, uh, you know, I'm excited to come to work every day. And I think that's probably the most important thing, right? So. I agree. And so for those of you who are just popping in, uh, we're talking with George Yates, who's the SVP over at Covenant. Um, and uh, I'm bringing him up as a great person to follow and to listen to when he talks about leadership and what's going on in our industry. Clearly don't follow him when he talks about football, or maybe you should. I guess his team <laughs> did win. <laughs> but I will tell you that I have heard you say a couple times integrity uh, grit, tenacity, being able to drive. I love, I love all of those traits. Um, and I'm always looking for those in people as well. I think it is difficult to learn, uh, the grit and the tenacity part. You just, maybe you're just born with it. Maybe you're not, I don't know, but I'm with you. I'm looking for those leadership principles. So tell me, um, when you're moving into, all right, I've got somebody onboarded, they're in my business and now we're through, a cycle, which we're about to come up on. Like we've been through the toughest times, right. which you've grown the business through, which is COVID. That was it's crazy um, for the late, the freight market. And you grew the business through that. So now everybody's getting a little bit comfortable. Now it's turning toward, we're having a different freight market where capacity is loosening. We're looking for more freight. Um, there's more negotiation power for brokers and shippers. What, tell me, how are you handling people who are getting, like some members of your team who are getting nervous about a cycle, they've never been through one, they don't know what's going on. They're like, but I've been doing so well for so long, George. I just got used to this. Yeah. So, you know, candidly, we're going to have to retrain a lot of people that have never been into, you know, what some would call a down market, right? Um, it's a mindset shift, um, you know, you're, you're probably transitioning more from a carrier centric market back to more of a customer centric market. Demand is changing. Capacity is loosening. Um, you know, service standards are going to be at, at the top of mind for a lot of shippers out there. Um, you know, f- for us, we have taken steps to strategically align ourselves with our customer for the long term. Um, you know, I, I think I saw a post on LinkedIn the other day. I can't even remember who posted it, but, you know, you're really going to find out who separates themselves um, in the hard times. And, um, you know, I, I think it just comes back to, you know, we're really not going to change, um, you know, what we're doing on a daily basis. We're still going to pour into our team members. We're still going to pour into our customers and our carrier partners. Um, you know, at the end of the day, we look at this as, you know, we're all in this together. Um, you know, with, without our carrier partners, we can't run our business without, um our customers, we can't run our business. And, um, you know, I, I think that partnership goes a long way and, um, just discussing challenges internally, um, externally with, you know, internal and external partners. Um, you know, I think is, you know, I think there's value in that. And I think if, you know, everybody is locked at the hip and working towards the same mission and, and the goals that, you know, each of our organizations are aligned to that you'll be successful. Um, but I, I do think that um, I do think that there is challenges ahead, and um, but I think that the industry is, you know, we're built for this. We've it's, there's been cycles from the beginning of time since you know logistics yeah. was even a thing, and um, you know, I, I told my team every day this is what we do. Um, so you know, we're we're prepared for it, and 
we're excited about the challenge. You know, I, I think we're, we're all going to find out what we're truly made of. And um, you yeah. know, I think hard work pays off. I agree. And I think if you get through this uh, time period and, you know, like you said, these are opportunities and we just got to learn how to work through this cycle, especially people who have not worked through this before. Um, uh, I saw on God, I think it was one of those Facebook groups for carriers and brokers or whatever. And sometimes I read them. I mean, carriers can be the bitchiest, like the small carrier market. I love them. We all love them, but they can be the bitchiest group ever. But they, I know a lot of them are very upset about the change of rates. And many of them are like, that's it. I'm not, I'm parking my truck for good. Dun, dun, dun. I've seen a lot of those posts and I feel like it could be dramatic. But do you think, do you think it's that bad right now? Like, I think we're seeing worse, <laughs> much worse. Um, you know, I, I, it's hard for me to put myself in another person's business shoes, right? Um, you know, I, I think those that have aligned themselves for the long term are, are going to fare well. And I think if yeah. you're a smaller carrier and you've been living off the spot market, you're probably going to feel pinched a little bit more. Um, but I still don't think it's too late to align yourselves with shippers or brokers that can help you run efficiently. Um, I think it's just about finding the right partner and, you know, putting your sales hat on and, um, you know, pushing through the tough times. Um, but yeah, it's, it's hard for me to imagine uh, myself in an owner operator's shoes. I've never been in those shoes before. Um, but I, I do think it's going to be challenging, but I do think that you can weather the storm. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. It is difficult. And also it's difficult to understand how much their operating costs are and what their true financial amounts are and how stressful it is and how difficult yeah. it is. Um, so that's a really good, yeah, I mean, very good point. I mean, inflation is, is a real thing. Equipment costs have gone up, maintenance costs have yep. gone up, fuel's going up. Um, so I think you're kind of dealing with that, that perfect storm as a, as a trucker right now and trying to navigate that is going to be challenging. Um, but there's, there's industry experts out there, there's resources out there that can help them. Um, and hopefully they find it if they are struggling. I hope so too. Tell me about Covenant a little bit. We have about three minutes left and I, I haven't had a chance to really talk about Covenant. So um, you're yeah. my first introduction really to Covenant, but Covenant is more than just a logistics company, right? Yeah, so, um, you know, the, the SBU that I oversee there, freight brokerage, um, it's just one, it's one aspect of our business. You know, Covenant's been around 36 years, founded by David Parker. Um, his story is amazing. Um, you know, legacy expedited company. Uh, but, you know, five, six years ago, David set out with our board and um, members of uh, our leadership team. And, you know, he cast a vision. He, he wants to become a, a true logistics company. Um, so, you know, we've made acquisitions uh, through Land Air and Access American Transport, um, focusing on, you know, dedicated contract logistics, warehousing, growing our managed transportation and, and freight brokerage offerings. And it, it's paid off. So, um, you know, we believe in our vision. We're going to continue to push on that vision. And, you know, we're excited about the future. But um, a lot of people still see Covenant as a, a legacy expedited company, but we, we do so much more and we're proving that. And, you know, we're growing deeper with our customer relationships and, you know, we're investing in people, um, making one of the largest tech investments that we ever had in, in the Mastery and Masterminds platform. And uh, we're, we're just very excited and bullish. And, uh, you know, we've, we've been fortunate and we're going to continue to keep the pedal of the metal and, and try to rock and roll and, and perform. I love it. I love hearing that. I love learning about Covenant from you because um, I didn't know much about them before, but that doesn't mean anything. Um, I'm, who am I? I'm just a dumb lawyer. But thank you. Thank you for coming on the show and sharing your knowledge with us and being our industry gem. And we will see you guys next Friday for another episode of Matt Gaines Live. And we hope everybody has a great Friday.